Hello CCP2 students, this is a quick key for the sample test, chapter 16 for the test on Monday, January 25th. So here we go, let me see if I can open it up here. So a couple true and false questions first. Um, wrong test, hold on here, let me find the right test. Um, yeah, there we go, awesome. Okay, some of these are not too bad. Acidic solutions have a pH that is under 7. That is correct. You might just remember that. But remember, it's it's a negative log 10. So when you have a negative log 10, everything's inverse. So you have more H plus in solution when you have a lower negative number. That's your exponent. So this is true. If an acid is strong, then its conjugate base is weak. Correct. Because the, um, sorry, the Ka times the Kb of the conjugate always equals 10 to the minus 14th. So you can't have two strong things and still get 10 to the minus 14th. This is true. So anyway, this one's false. This should equal 14. That's a little sneaky one there on my part. Okay, for the true and false, be careful of knowing the section 12, and that is this little diagram here. Lewis acids, which is anything that is a um, proton pair acceptor. Lewis base is a proton as a, the, sorry, a Lewis acid is an electron pair acceptor and a Lewis base is an electron pair donor. Bronsted is all about the H's. And finally, Arrhenius is in the middle here. So if you're a Lewis acid, you're automatically, well, if you're Arrhenius, you're automatically a Bronsted and Lewis. If you're a Lewis acid, you may not be a Bronsted and Arrhenius. Anyway, as far as the definition, Bronsted acid is only substances that accept H. That is correct. So it has to accept H. A Lewis acid, which is an electron pair acceptor, may not be an H, actually. So what we're saying is, what is the definition of everybody in this region? And it is that. A Lewis acid is electron pair donor. You might say to yourself, how am I going to remember electron pair donor acceptor? Think of an H uh, proton. An H is a proton without electrons. So when you, when you, as an acid, when you lose a proton, that proton's going to want to accept a pair of electrons. So it's not a donor, it's acceptor. So that's false. Or any acid is also considered a Lewis acid? Incorrect. Lewis acid can be something that's not H. Or any acid is an H that's let go, and it can accept pro, it can accept an electron pair. But so are um, other. So for as far as the Lewis definition, you can have other substances that are electron pair acceptors that are not H. So this is, um, our Hanius acid is also considered Lewis acid. That is, sorry, that is true. So an H is an electron pair acceptor. I was going the other way. A Lewis acid is not necessarily our Hanius acid. This one, the first Ka of a diprotic acid, that's like H2SO4, H2, that is, is always larger than the second Ka. True. It's much easier to get at the first one. Oxo acids are stronger if their central atom has a larger, more positive oxidation number. That's true as well. Okay, so those are just some of the rules you've been using. You just have to be aware of how they're how you say it in proper terms. Write the formulas of conjugate acids. Okay, so what that means is that these guys are functioning as bases. So conjugate acids would be the counterpart of a base. So this base would be NH4. Now remember, if you add a H to it as neutral, you become positive. This one, which is negative, should become neutral. So you did this on quiz one. Write the formulas for the conjugate bases of the following. Okay, so these guys are functioning as acids. So they lose, they use, I don't know why I put a, well, anyway, we'll go with it. HPO4. You lost a positive, so make it minus 2. This, you lose 1H, make it negative. Because so you just lost a positive, so now you're negative. And then finally, this one would be ClO4, negative 1. So if you're a conjugate base, make the person, the person that you're the partner with be an acid. pH, okay. Now I need my log calculator, but... Um, we can get the we can do this a couple ways. One way is to find the pOH of this first by taking the negative log 10 of this thing. So let me put in 3.4 times 10 to the negative eighth. Find this here. 
So here we go. Point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three, four. Oops, I needed to do that a little bit differently here. Log ten. Whoops. Okay, log of point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, three, four equals. So that's seven point four six. Let me go over here and put that in. Let's see, seven point four six. So this is seven point four six. So that's the POH though, and now I lost my pen. So hold on here. There we go. So POH is 7.46. Remember, take the negative of that. So 14 minus that would be 7.54. Remember, if you have OH, you're getting the POH if you take the negative log 10. Okay, this one. Just take 14. Oh, I still got it wrong, you guys. I did something that I told you guys to be careful of. I found the pH right now. I found the pH is 7.54. So what is the H plus concentration? That would be 10, oops, sorry, 10 to the minus 7.54. Let me go back. 10 to the negative 7, 2.5, whoops. 10, let me see, 10. So, let me see here. Let's take the, um, let's see, where's the inverse log? Inverse. Oops. Um, let me see here. Inverse log. There we go. Um, negative 7.54 equals 2.88 times 10 to the negative 8th. 2.88 times 10 to the negative 8th. Okay, let me go back to here. Whoops, wrong test again. I'm having a problem. So this would be 2.88. Let me try this again. 0.88 times 10 to the negative eighth. Okay, this one, I can get the pH by taking 14 minus 5.4, because pH plus pOH equals 14. You guys seem to know that pretty well. Um, let's make that 8.6 for the pH. Same thing, let's put 10 to the negative 8.6 in our calculators. 10 to the negative, okay. negative, what was it again? Hmm. Negative 8.6, negative 8.6. Okay, so 2.5 times 10 to the negative ninth. 2.5 times 10 to the negative ninth. 2.5 times 10 to the negative ninth. pH, just take, we're going to take the inverse log, that means 10, negative inverse log, by the way, negative 9.8. Here we go. So we'll do that in the calculator. So I think you know that pretty well. pOH, well, Okay, so on this one, we were looking for the H+. plus. Here comes the pOH. This one's the easiest one. It's 9.8, which is 14 minus 4.2. This one, we would take um, the negative log 10 of this. And so negative log 10 of 6 times 10 to the negative third. I bet it's 2 point something. Then this one, we could take, we could find, we could do it a couple ways, I guess. Um, I would say 10 to the minus 14th, because um, H plus concentration times OH concentration equals that, and then divided by 3 times 10 to the negative 6, and that would give you your OH concentration. Then you can take the negative log 10 of that. There we go. Okay, now we move to the next part. We had another quiz where we did some of this stuff. If it is a strong acid, well, it kind of tells you it's a strong acid because you don't have a Ka. So you automatically say that if you have 2 times 10 to the negative third, your H plus is also 2 times 10 to the negative third. And so, of course, you take the negative log 10 of that to get your pH. This one, 
Um, it's a weak, weak one, so let's do an ice table for this one. So HNO2 becomes H plus plus NO2. There we go. And we put down that the original concentration is 3 times 10 to the negative 8th. That will be minus X. This will be 3 times 10 to the negative 8th minus X. And we'll have 0, 0, plus X, plus X. So we said in class, why do we do this? We know what the equilibrium expression will be. So we got X squared. We'll assume that this is 3 times 10 to the negative 8th, since the Ka is very, very weak. Um, where did I get that? I'm sorry. I'm doing the whole thing wrong. Let's put 2 times 10 to the negative 1, which is also 0 0.2. So this is point 0.2 minus x, my bad. Okay, so now anyway, point 0.2 minus x. Sorry, I took the wrong number. Equals our Ka, but our Ka is extremely low. So what we're going to say then is that we're going to assume that point 0.2 minus x is point 0.2, and then you can solve it from there. But you need to do the ice table. Okay, this one. We have 1.5 minus x and that'd be over x squared very low ka so let's make this x squared over 1.5 equals 7 times 10 to the negative 6 you can easily then cross multiply and solve for x when you solve for x you're going to get the h plus concentration so you need to take the negative log 10 of that same thing for the previous problem by the way remember you're looking for the ph it's so easy sometimes to forget what you're looking for. So at the end of these problems, you're getting the, excuse me, the molarity of X, which is H plus. So um, then you have to take the negative log 10 of that to get the pH. Okay, this one, pretty straightforward. You can put down their formulas. Got some halogens. You also have some polyatomics like HNO3, H2SO4. You got HClO3, HClO4, to name a few. Then, again, you have the periodic table in front of you, so you can say NaOH, LiOH. Just list all your group ones, KOH, whatever, and so on and so forth. Okay, what is the pOH of a 3-molar KOH? What is the pH of the same solution? Okay. Notice this is a strong base. Why? Because it's KOH. It's a group 1 hydroxide. So that means your OH concentration, your OH equals 3 molar. So what's the pH of that same solution? Well, what you can do is the following. I think you can do two things, by the way. I could convert this to pOH by taking the negative log 10 of 3, and then I could then, um, then I could take 14 minus that. Let's do that. Because I know this one's going to be a little tricky for a lot of people. So you're going to get a number you don't expect. So let's go there. Let's take the negative log, let's take the negative log 10 of 3. Okay, SEC log 10 of 3 equals 0.47. So we take the negative of that, by the way, is negative 0.47. We got a negative pH. That's what I was trying to get at. Negative 0.47. Let's call it negative 0.48, by the way. So we get negative 0.48 for the pOH. Okay, so what's the pH? Well, it's 14 minus that. It's minus 0.48. So we get a 14.48 for the answer there. Okay. What is the pH of a 0.2 molar solution of NH4? The KB of NH4 is 3.3 was a pH. Okay, doing a bunch of bases here. So notice we got a KB that's kind of small. We're doing an ice table. So remember with the ice table, I should have put three here. I really meant to say three. Because you really want to show that on the other side, it gains a proton and it loses something else. We won't worry about that. But it's gonna still be X squared over blah, blah. So it's still X squared over 0.2 minus 
see, minus what? Minus x, by the way. Yeah, minus x, I'm sorry. I had a mental sub there. That equals the kb. Cool. So yeah, so it's always, you're gonna always get x and another x, and then this is minus x, but it's 0.2 to begin with. Same old ice table. You get x on the product side, x times x. You get the original concentration minus x. Well, we can assume it's 0.2 and assume that x is pretty small. We can solve for x, but my point in this one is, once you get x, what do you have? x is going to equal your OH concentration, not your H. So, actually, we're done. So once you get that, you'll have that. If you're looking for the pH, though, just take 14 minus that. The pH of a one molar solution of uh, phosphoric acid, what is the Ka1 of... H3PO4. Cool. Now, again, <clears throat> we're looking for the Ka. We're going to assume we have to do an ice table. I'd say, why are we doing this? But let's just do it H3PO4. And then this would be H2PO4. This would be H. All right. We got um, one molar. We got zero, zero. We got minus x, we got x, x, and then we got 1 minus x, we got x, x, so we should get x squared over 1 minus x. We don't know what Ka1 is, actually. There we go. So you see we're, we're constantly getting the same expression over and over again. This time, though, we're not going to assume that x is small. We don't know what the heck x is, actually. So the next little thing here, this is a different ice table completely. Not a different ice table, but what you're doing is different. Um, the pH. What does the pH tell you as far as x? So you have to put an x because you're really looking for this, by the way. So how does the pH tell you what x is? Well, it basically tells you this guy. x is H+. plus. So you have to take the inverse log of 5.5 because you got the log of it. So 10 to the negative 5.5 is what you're going to plug in for this. So, of course, you can go to your calculator. 10, whoops, inverse 10 to the negative, what was it again? 5.5. Oops. 5. 0.5 equals so 3.16 times 10 to the negative fifth. Let's see if I got that right. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, 3.16 times 10 to the negative six. My bad. 3.16 times 10 to the negative six. 3.16. So yeah, that's an lucky thing to put in here, but you have to plug that in, plug that in here, and go for your answer. All right, the pH of a solution of uh, base is 11.1 when its concentration is 0.2. What is the Kb? Okay, what I would prefer you do here is actually go with the pOH. Because when you do a base, you're losing OHs. The pH is not giving you X. It's actually giving the inverse of that. So let's change this to the pH. pOH is actually um, 2.9. So if we have the 2.9, we'll have x squared over 0.2 minus x equals our kb. Remember, that's how I get that's my ice table over and over again. It ends up being x squared all every single time because everything comes off as onesies. The original concentration minus x. We don't know what x is because we don't know what the pH is or the pOH. Um, well, wait, wait, I'm sorry. We do know what it is, so we'll put that in, but then we can plug in for here. So... We're going to take 10 to the minus 2.9 to tell us what our x is, because x is OH coming off. So 10 to the ne negative 2.9, plug that in, and you can solve it all the way through. Yes, on this last year's test, I had to do a double ice table. I won't make you do that again. All right, let's do these guys. Make Take the cation and make a base. Ask yourself, is this a strong base? Nope, it's weak. 
put an H in front of the Cl. Don't worry about the Cl2. We got strong acid. So we're going to call this acidic. Then we're going to put LiOH, which is strong. That's a strong base. Versus H2S is a weak acid. So we got a basic solution. NaOH is a strong base and HCl is a strong acid so we're gonna have neutral on this one okay there's a straight memorization remember on the left you have basic on the far right you have acidic for again these are oxides and finally in the middle we have amphoteric very good okay all we have is Arrhenius Bronsted. Big thing with Arrhenius is look for OH. Bronsted, no OH, but we got H's. This one has no H's. And also, the equation is acid plus base doesn't make salt water. It makes one compound. This one is salt and water if you do an acid plus base. This one makes a new acid and base. So you can look at it from many angles. So on this one, I do not see salt water. I do see H's and I see a new base and I do see a new acid. This is Bronsted. Here's one, two become one. That's That's gotta be Lewis. There's no H's anyway. Then here we got the water and salt. This is our, this is our Hania said. The OH is the sinker for that one. Okay, let's talk about strong and weak acids. The further down we go, the halogens, the stronger it is. So that one's the strongest. The bigger the oxidation number. The oxidation number here, ClO4 plus 1 plus Cl plus 2 times negative 4 equals 0. That's our oxidation numbers. Cl equals a plus 7. That guy is the biggest plus. If you do it over here, we got 1 plus Cl plus minus 6. Cl equals a plus 5. And this one, if you do it, is a plus three. So that's the white one. Look at your, um, for carboxylic acids, how close is the electronegative atom? This one doesn't have any on the other carbons. This one has a pretty close, and so does this one. It's actually a tricky one here. This one's too far away. Which one's more electronegative, fluorine or chlorine? This one is. So you do that one. So that should give you some ideas to make sure that you're um, remembering how to do stuff and and keeping track of whether you're a ph or you're an h plus or a poh or an oh plus that's the main thing just to be kind of awake too so thank you very much